in the UK, more than 6 million people are currently having about 80% of their wages paid by the government, but that might likely uh, change soon. Let's bring in Juliana Olainka to talk to us and give us more details on some of those developments there. Good afternoon, Juliana. Chancellor Rishi Sunak is to reveal the future of the government's job retention scheme later. I mean, growing calls to extend it. This scheme is supposed to end in June. Any chances it might be extended? Good afternoon, Chimese. Well, he's actually just finished giving his um, speech. He's still answering questions in the House of Commons at the moment. And yes, the retention scheme has been extended. It was going to last until the end of June. The Chancellor has now announced that it will last until the end of October. Um, so as you said, yes, this uh, furlough scheme, which is the government subsidising um, people's wages up to £2,500, which is 80% of the equivalent, has really been heralded as what will potentially uh, keep the economy here in Britain going. There is no other scheme like this in the world. There have been um, serious concerns from business leaders and trade unionists about whether or not going up until June would just be enough, uh, because, of course, some people will still be working at home. Some people won't be able to get uh, to work. Some people will only be able to come back part time. Um, the Chancellor has said that it will remain the same up until the end of July. But from August to October, he is saying that he wants employees to work alongside the government um, just to see how much uh, they can contribute to the pot. This is costing the UK government about £7 billion every single month. It mm. at the moment has about 7.5 million people under the scheme and about 1 million businesses. It is deemed a success. It is one of the um, shining examples of how Britain was able to manage through this COVID-19 lockdown. And uh, for a relief to many, it has been extended. And the Transport for London expects to lose about £4 billion this year due to COVID-19, and they are asking for financial support. What sort of support are they expecting, a grant or a loan? Well, it certainly won't be a loan because it will be coming from, from the government, um, but it's a bailout. They're really in trouble since the lockdown started on the 23rd of March. Um, the TfL's uh, salary, the wages, everything that they've been getting um, has been wiped out by at least 95%. Over 90% of people are just not using uh, the transport. And of course, they get um, all of their revenue through fares. And it can cost one individual travelling into London hundreds of pounds a month and they don't have that anymore. So they are in intense talks with the governments about how they may stop certain projects that are coming on later in the year or next year in replace of this bailout. Of course, this all comes under uh, the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, who's been really um, strong and speaking quite um, vehemently on the media, telling people not to travel um, on the London underground. The government have been in... Uh, pretty much of a standstill with him because at the moment there's just a reduced train service, which means even though less people are travelling, the trains are more packed. So they do need this money to get them out of this situation, especially because from tomorrow we're expecting thousands upon thousands of more people travelling into London to get into work. At the moment, about 7,000 TfL staff are on furlough and several um, TfL workers have died from COVID-19. And the Bank of England deputy governor says the UK may be heading towards negative interest rates. This is after the bank held its interest rate at a historic low of 0.1% last Thursday. How are the markets digesting this statement at intraday? Well, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, conversation that Ben Broadbent, as you said, the deputy Bank of England governor, uh, was having. I think he was having this discussion with CNBC. It hasn't actually been picked up by the markets because, of course, even though he's an MPC policy maker, Andrew Bailey, the new Bank of England governor, is against negative interest rates. He was asked about whether or not it was a possibility. And of course, considering the climate he is, he referenced back to the 2009 financial crisis. And he said since that time, it's always been on the table, but it's something that we obviously don't want to do. The negative interest rates, of course, will put pressure on the banks to lend more and they will be penalised if they do not uh, lend to individuals. And of course, they will also uh, pay a pretty hefty fine and stop 
their um, balances from going up. But as we know, Andrew Bailey, he doesn't want that. He would prefer quantitative easing at the moment, I believe, uh, the, the budget for that from the Bank of England for the government is about £650 billion. Will it rise? It depends on how fast uh, the government can get the wheels on the economy turning. Uh, but there's a lot of excitement about Rishi Sunak's uh, new announcement that really picked up the numbers at intraday. Uh, the FTSE All Share is up 0.74%. The FTSE 100 is up by 0.90%. And the FTSE 250 is slightly down at 0.36%. In currencies, the pound is up on the dollar by 0.20%, down on the euro by 0.01%, and down on the Japanese yen by 0.10%. Thank you, Juliana, but let's keep tracking those numbers there. Thank you.